So I've been meaning to do this experiment for ages. Diamond SD330 costs just under £500 here in the UK. In terms of its length on 20 metres, it's about 1.7 metres long. That's about 5 foot 10. That's a fraction longer than an ATAS uh, 120A, which is the probably even more popular screwdriver antenna, which tends to be used mostly with Yezu transceivers. The Ampro Hamstick, by contrast, is about 23 to 25 pounds here in the UK and is around 2.45 metres long. That's basically about, uh, about 8 feet altogether. OK, so to do this, I use the reverse beacon network. Now, the reverse beacon network is a network of beacons that basically give you a, um, a signal strength uh, reading rather than send out signals themselves, so to receive rather than transmit beacons. Now, to do this, we needed to use CW. And the IC7300 has a very simple built-in mechanism for you to uh, key out a, a simple test uh, message using CW. Both antennas were used uh, alternat alternately. So what we did, or what I did, was to uh, put a CQ call out on one antenna and then swap it for the other antenna and put a CQ call out, etc. And keep going alternately like that for about one hour per day. Of course, it would have been better, of course, to have both these antennas transmitting at the same time so you can have direct hits and direct comparisons in real time at the same time but uh, i couldn't do that so the way to overcome that was to try and make things a little bit more valid by uh, continuously alternating between both antennas so cq call out on one antenna take it off then the other antenna then back to the other antenna uh, i used my uh, full call for the uh, ampro and used my uh, intermediate call which i still have the two echo zero call for the diamond sd330 I'm making sure that i used uh, separate frequencies each time i called cq so i used the lower part of the cw portion on 20 meters for the uh, for the ampro and i used the higher part of the cw portion for the sd330 and even then alternating my for changing my frequency every time I called CQ, so there wasn't a repetition of a frequency at all. And the SWR was very good for both antennas. Used the same mount, the same coax run, exactly the same coax, uh, same position on the car. Basically, there was very little difference, except for the fact that we weren't transmitting on both antennas at the same time. Final thing to say was that band conditions on both days were pretty horrible. Uh, the experiment was done at the same sort of time on both days. Uh, weekday 2.30 to 3.30 local time, which is the same for 14.30 to 15.30 UTC. And used 10 watts on day one and decided to go up to 40 watts on day two, just to see whether there was any difference between the two days. Now let's have a look at the results. So the first thing we looked at in terms of the results was the total number of spots across both days. Now this would be where we could have a beacon, for example, that might hear the Ampro, for example, five or six times. That would count as five, say five spots, six spots, whatever. Okay, that's the total number of spots that we had. So on day one, where we had particularly uh, bad propagation, like we had on day two, actually, just running 10 watts here, the SD330 was spotted a grand total of 50 times, was, was picked up a grand total of 50 times. The Ampro was picked up a grand total of 85 times. On day two, the SD330 had 45 occasions where it was picked up, the Ampro 68. So in total, across both days, the SD had uh, 95 occasions where it was uh, received by a beacon and the Ampro 153 times. So uh, in this case, the Ampro was picked up about 61% more times than the SD330. Next way to look at the results was how many actual separate beacons heard both of these antennas. So if a beacon heard an antenna once or six times, it only counts as one beacon. So on day one, the uh, SD330 was received by 16 separate beacons, the Ampro by 25 separate beacons. Day two, the SD330 by 27 separate beacons, the Ampro by 39. The overall total then, SD330 received by 43 different beacons across both days, the Ampro by 64. That means that the Ampro was spotted by 49% more uh, beacons than the sd 330. So another, again, another clear win for the Ampro Hamstick. So it's similar again, but this time we're looking at beacons that receive these antennas uh, that were situated around 500 to 1,000 miles away from where I was because there was a particular um, bump in the results here for this particular uh, distance range. Let's have a quick look at this. So uh, between 500 to 1,000 miles away, on day one, seven beacons heard the diamond, 13 heard the hamstick, 
on day two, 12 heard the diamond and 19 heard the uh, hamstick. So in total, across both days, the hamstick won by 32 different beacons to 19 in the 500 to 1,000 mile uh, distance range. So actually, uh, in this particular range, uh, the Ampro was uh, listened or received, I should say, by 68% more beacons than the SD330. So clearly there's a bit of a an extra lobe going on here for some reason. Maybe it was my particular setup, but there again, both antennas were put in the same position on the car, same mount, etc., same, same coax, same power. So clearly the Ampro, for some reason, and one or two of you experts are, might, might be able to tell me, had a particular advantage in that 500, 500 I should say, to 1,000 mile mark. Uh, that would denote a sort of a takeoff angle, usually probably around a sort of, I don't know, 30 degree, mar uh, 30, 35 degree mark, something like that. Interesting. I wonder whether there's a particular lobe uh, because of the length of the antenna. But it's interesting to see how that, that particular part of 20 meters, uh, the Ampro clearly had a, a bit more of an advantage than it did overall compared to the SD330 at that sort of distance. Useful distance, of course, during the day, because if you're working, say, a poter activation or something, a lot of your contacts probably will be around the 1,000 mile mark, some, you know, a little bit in as well than that, but closer than that. And uh, that's a useful point as to why the Ampro hamstick tends to do pretty well on a band by 20 meters during the day. The penultimate set of results looks at the uh, number of um, instances where a beacon only heard one of these antennas each day. So if a beacon only heard the diamond, for example, that would be one for the diamond. If it only heard the ampro, that would be one for the ampro. So let's have a look. So on day one, during that first day, no beacons only heard the uh, diamond and didn't hear the ampro, whereas there were nine beacons that only heard the ampro and didn't hear the diamond. And on day two, there were two beacons that only heard the diamond and didn't hear the Ampro. There were 13 beacons that only heard the Ampro and didn't hear the diamond. And in total across the two days then, 22 beacons only heard the Ampro and only two beacons only heard the diamond and didn't hear the Ampro. In 8% of the time where beacons only received one antenna was that the diamond, whereas 92% of the time where only one beacon heard one of these antennas, it was actually the Ampro. So that shows that the, the Ampro again has a distinct advantage. And the final one looks at average signal. This is a bit of a tougher one to really get your teeth into when you're not transmitting both antennas at the same time. Nonetheless, there was a trend here. So we're only looking at instances on day one and instances on day two where a beacon receives both antennas. Nevertheless, across both days, on, as an average overall, the uh, SD330 had a, a, a signal-to-noise uh, ratio of 7.7 .7 dB, and the Ampro was 9.3 dB. So, again, we can see a slight advantage of about 1.5 dB there for the Ampro. Two one-hour sessions. Nonetheless, there were a lot of efforts made to try and make this as fair as possible. Obviously, what would have been better would be to have two identical vehicles with two identical setups running these antennas at the same time. But that's difficult to achieve when you're using it as a mobile setup, which is me and my car. However, despite that, and with some reservations and accommodations made for QSB, I think overall we can come to some pretty reasonable conclusions here. And the conclusion is, the headline is that the Ampro performed much better. Now, why was that? Well, I think the most basic answer is the fact that the Ampro is a longer antenna. It's a, a quarter wave, no, sorry, it's an eighth wave long, I should say, on 20 meters. The diamond is much less, uh, much uh, shorter in length, and I think therefore would suffer in terms of having a lower radiation resistance. We can't get away from that. You know, physics is physics. A longer antenna tends to do better than a shorter antenna when it, it's uh, when both are less than a quarter wave long. It's just how it is. Um, what it also tells us as well is that whilst the diamond is a more convenient antenna, and not just the diamond, but we could bring the ATAS into this. Is, is, this is discussion as well because the ATAS is shorter than the diamond so the results we see for the diamond SD330 here we can say probably at best that the ATAS will be no better and in fact would probably be even be slightly worse if we think that it is actually uh, one and a half meters long on 20 meters compared to 1.7 meters long for the diamond. I think the convenience factor is obviously important for these sorts of uh, screwdriver antennas and in the depths of winter if you can go from 20 to 40 meters, for example, having to get out and change the uh, change the antenna, that obviously is a good thing. 
But if we're looking in terms of performance, then I think the Ampro Hamsticks for the money are absolutely outstanding value. It's a 20th of the price. Now, you could say, yeah, you get more bands with a diamond. Well, buy four or five Ampro Hamsticks, it'll cost you probably no more than 100, 120 pounds. And that still leaves you about 400 pounds better off than you would do buying uh, the diamond or about 250 pounds better off than you would do buying the ATAS. So there's not just value for money, there's a performance element here as well. As you go higher up in bands, the differential will be will be less because obviously those bands will require a shorter antenna. But on the money band, 20 meters, where you know most people would operate really portable or mobile, clearly there's a bit of a difference between these two antennas. Um, if it was me, if I was dipping my toe into HF Mobile for the first time and I wanted to get into sort of multi-band operating with one antenna, you might be better off getting a, uh, a loading coil. Like a, like a slide winder or a mad dog coil from, from VK, or you can get like a Wolf River coil, something along those lines. Uh, it's manually adjustable, have one whip on there, and the whip, by the way, I would buy a 20 pound, nine foot long um, uh, quarter wave, um, a 4CB, basically, okay, a tank whip. Have that on the coil, adjust the coil up and down, Bingo. You've got yourself, and once you get used to it, you'll, you'll get very close or bang on with the tuning anyway, once you get used to it. And what you've then got is a cheap manual screwdriver antenna with a degree of, of greater convenience and using monoband sort of antennas like hamsticks. And it'll cost you probably no more than about £100. All right. Um, the other thing finally to say about this is that you can probably use a slightly longer radiator with the diamond. It's a bit of a faff because you'll have to sort of modify it physically a little bit to do that. With the ATAS, you'll literally have to think, get a drill out and, and drill it out and do all sorts of stuff. And it's a lot of money to have to modify the antenna. The one screwdriver antenna I think that would outperform the the, um, the Amp Pro consistently would be the little Tar Heel range that I've used. However, you can't buy them in the UK because uh, the US aren't uh, exporting them anymore which is a huge shame because you can put easily put a 3 8 wave whip onto that quite easily and uh, you'll be able to be really have the convenience aspect but also the performance aspect as well. So there we are, the Ampro Hamstick wins it for me. Uh, what sort of experiences have you had using HF Mobile? Do you use the Ampro range or whatever it's called in your country of hamsticks? How do you get on with those compared with screwdriver antennas that you've used? Put your stuff in the comments below. By the way, this is not an anti-ATAS thing. An ATAS has its place for convenience. Same with the diamond. If it's me though, and it is me, and sorry, this is just me, uh, for a fraction of the price, you get better performance. And by the way, one last thing, in about four or five years time, you'll have probably two HF bands to work, on, to work with. Forget about the higher bands. It'll be about 20 and 40 meters for most of us when we do HF mobile. And for 50 pounds, you can have two antennas that work very well, or pretty well, on those two bands. All the best to you. Take care and hope to catch you on the next one. Bye for now.